Th thank you, President, and I'm pleased to rise to speak somewhat briefly to the Police and Emergency Legislation Amendment Bill. And it does, this bill does a range of things, as the previous speakers have, spoke, have, have mentioned and talked to, um, expanding the definition of the designated places for PSOs, um, enabling someone who is in jail for one reason to be questioned by the police and moved within the police station to be questioned on another offence, and certainly um, changes some of the um, abilities for sheriffs to serve applications for family violence, as well as amending some of the Fire Rescue Victoria Act in regards to district map references. So again, two in one week, two omnibus bills in one week. And, you know, I, the problem with omnibus bills is quite often you support parts of it, but you're vehemently opposed to other parts of it. Now, I can't say vehement is the word I would use for this bill, um, but I am struggling with some parts of this, of this bill where others I'm, I'm completely comfortable with. Um, and this is the, dis the, the difficulty, and I think it was the difficulty that many of us found also um, with the, the previous omnibus bill that we debated uh, this, this week, that there were certain aspects of it that many of us supported, others that we found difficulty with, and as we saw with um, the, the debate and the, and the, the differences of opinion um, on that bill, that was very apparent. And again, we're finding that with this, with this bill as well. I would like to speak predominantly around the expansion of uh, the protective services officers um, powers and I know that um, you know that some people might say this is semantics and certainly I, I appreciate and thank um, Minister Neville's staff for their briefings and um, and and answering of questions about this bill uh, when we mentioned expansion of powers. They said, of course, it's not the expansions of powers of PSOs, Fiona, uh, Miss Patton. Um, it's just the expansion of where they can use those powers. Uh, so I think that is, that is some semantics there, um, that it's not an expansion of the power, just expanding where those powers can be used. Uh, that, um, I, I think, you know, and that, and that, was raised um, with me certainly by, um, by Ariel Couchman from Youth Law, who wrote to us, and I'm sure wrote to many of us in here, asking, I think, the very good question, why? Why do we need to expand the powers of the PSOs? Why do we need to expand uh, where the, the protective service officers can operate? Um, and, and, and at this point, I'd actually just like to do a shout out to the protective services officers here at the Parliament precinct, where I think it's an extremely appropriate place for PSOs to be. And certainly, you know, as someone who catches public transport as well, I, I also would like to add my appreciation uh, in, in those areas. And I think, you know, they're doing what they were established to do in 1988. Um, I'm not convinced that, that where this bill takes them is actually where is the intention of the PSOs or the intention that was established back in 1988. In some ways, you would see this as a kind of a bracket creep um, and, and, and very much a blurring of the roles between the police and the, and the PSOs here. Um, in fact, I think it was only in 2017 that we were having this same conversation about yet other expansions of protective service officers' um, powers. And we're back here again in three years later talking about another expansion of powers of the PSOs. And this, this is concerning to us. Um, as other speakers have mentioned, PSOs undergo 12 weeks of training. 12 weeks, and we are, now going, we are now expanding their roles to detain, to arrest, to apprehend, to use um, uh, 
uh, to use lethal force in shopping centres, at you know, in and around showgrounds, in in any large area. This bill says in any large area. So I do have concerns about this, and and I was also kind of surprised that. You know, all the people that were yelling at me on social media about the expansion of powers in the last omnibus bill that we debated this week are silent on this one. Absolutely silent. In fact, we're actually seeing some amendments from the opposition to give them more powers, to expand, to ensure that there's more of them on the train stations, to see that, that they are travelling in pairs. To ex well. <laughs> I think, again, I think this is a matter of semantics that, this, that ostensibly this bill isn't expanding the powers of the PSOs. But it is interesting that in that last bill, and, you know, and I think due to the pressure of a number of us in this chamber, the omnibus bill that we debated earlier this week was amended because we saw that the, that the expanded powers in that bill were too far, that that went too far. But in this bill, this isn't actually just about expanding those powers in a state of emergency. This is expanding those powers, full stop. This is permanent expansion. And this, we have raised this, and IBAC has raised concerns about the powers of PSOs, about their use of it. Um, the IBAC report in, t in 2015 set, reported 182 allegations of assault and excessive force, and 71 reports and allegations of predatory behaviour by PSOs between 2012 and 2015. The IBAC Parliamentary Committee inquiry into the external oversight of police corruption and misconduct in Victoria in 2018 made 69 recommendations that the government sadly never responded to about how we could how we could improve the um, uh, how we could improve the oversight. And I think in today's paper again newspaper again, we are talking about the lack of oversight and the lack of funding for IBAC to be able to appropriately do the investigation and oversight that they are appointed to do and that we uh, would very much like to see them do. Uh, when we go to committee, I will be very interested in hearing the government's response to the lack of training for PSOs, particularly when we are looking at some pretty significant expansions of powers. Um, expansions for, as I said, after just 12 weeks training to be able to use lethal power, lethal force in a shopping centre, to use lethal force in a showground or a sports ground or in any large area um, as, as um, as appointed by an assist by the, the commissioner, or I understand the deputy commissioner. Um, so this, and we know that when these expanded powers occur, and this was the concern that we had in the previous omnibus bill, that those powers will go to the most power, will affect the most powerless. They will affect our Aboriginal community. They will affect our young people the most. And certainly, when we're talking about spaces like. Um, shopping centres, uh, like um, showgrounds, like uh, those places, it is those most disadvantaged that will probably come into contact with the PSOs more often and more regularly, certainly, than you and I would in here. So I will, look for, I will listen to the debate further closely on this, but as I say that, you know, some parts of this bill I do found ominous. And, Interestingly, those parts which I think are very similar to the bill that we debated on Tuesday evening and well into Wednesday morning, uh, uh, that we debated and we heard from people saying how egregious those sections of the bill were, how they were going to be this incredible infringement on our freedoms. They're silent today on this. Silent. But in contrast to this, I am supportive of some of the aspects of the bill as they relate to the FRV. 
and the lodging of the updated boundary maps that take into account, as we saw, um, the recent movement uh, of the CFA around Hoppers Crossing and the new station that will be built in that's just opening in Tarnit. I think these are fairly common sense amendments that do assist in that transition of the fire service reform. So as I say, with a sense of ambivalence, I'll finish my contribution here and I will listen to the debate closely.